do. <laughs> he says, I was trying to think of some way of introducing myself that was going to be different. Uh, now then, Siri, I think that's what was. Right, back in the garage here, and we're going to do a bit of a video here today. One of the comments on one of my videos on the, on the YouTube uh, asked me if I was go ever going to install a brake control unit. Well, I have. Um, it's been a break. I've, I've had one installed since I bought the thing, really. A bit of a funny story because uh, there's all backlog of a drama that occurred with me having Finn ending up with Finn. And what I had before that was one called Albert. Um, there's a black, a black Defender S um, with the P300 engine in it. And I much preferred that, really, in some respects. I didn't like the black. Black were never my colour. But anyway, I ended up with Finn because there was some drama with with the um, with black one, Albert. And, uh, and I ended up with this, uh, with, with, with this thing, which is, uh, w which is good, really, in, in some respects. And, uh, and better, in fact. Uh, but because they ended up picking Finn up right from, the, from where we were, up there, up in Calgary... Um, I actually had to tow back uh, me little caravan. I've got a little caravan outside. And I ended up towing that back. Uh, and so I needed a brake control unit. And the brake control unit was fitted to my Range Rover when I swapped it. So, a bit of a long story, this. And I'm getting into all kinds of things here going on. But we swapped the black, we swapped the brake control unit into, into the Defender, into the S, uh, Albert. And then when Albert was back at the the shop for once of roof racks and all the things that needed to be fitted and then wasn't, and, and that's a, another long story. We ended up then swapping the brake control unit out of Albert directly into Vin. In fact, if I remember rightly, I think I have a... I think the, the, the panel on which my brake control unit screwed is actually the panel out of Albert. We just swapped the old panels and they didn't end up with screw holes in Albert. That's another story. Anyway, um... What was I going to tell you? So, the, the story is that, yes, I have fitted a brake control unit. Now, in Britain, we don't have such things because we've got a better tow system. Uh, overrun brakes, and, and having used both, uh, it's my considered opinion that the overrun brakes are, uh, is, a, is a better towing system. Um, and what, of course, that means is that in, in the British system, there's a hydraulic component to the trailer hitch, and as the inertia of the towed vehicle pushes against the slowing uh, tow vehicle uh, it applies the hydraulic brake system or a push rod brake system drum brake system whichever to uh, to the the wheels of the trailer and, and slows the trailer down really basically and what we've got here is we've got a system i think this is the same system in australia as well but those chaps from australia will let me know i suppose in the comments um i have seen a really good system in, in australia uh, a tow hitch system and a brake system that I've been thinking about trying to retrofit over here but I don't know whether that would work uh, the system they have here is a little electronic brake control unit and, and and it meant I suppose it's meant to figure out how much braking you're applying to the brake pedal and then sort of pass that to the, the wheels in, in terms of a sort of a magnetic brake system that they've got on the wheels out here the result is actually you end up with too much brake and not enough brake and too keen a brake and it's all, it's not very good in my opinion. You can never just seem to get it right. And the other downside is that every time you have a different trailer on, you need to sort of reset the gadget because you might have, I don't know, two axle or three axle brakes and they more weight or less weight or something. Anyway, it, never, it doesn't really work very well in my humble opinion. Um, <laughs> <laughs> which isn't very humble is it really but anyway so that's what we're going to do today i'm going to show you how to fasten this thing in uh if you do happen to live in america or in canada or, or maybe even in australia if you have such things um i'm going to show you how how to wire in or at least where to wire in um this brake unit now get into the hub of the argument the the, the brake unit i've got is a Tamagotchi or someone, what do they call it, Tekonchi, Tekonchi unit, and I've had it a long time, I had it in the, the Range Rover before now, and, and then uh, put it, as I said, into, into Albert, and then into this, in fact, I had it in my LR3 even before my Rangey, so, um, I've had it a long time, probably, I bet you've had it 10 years, um, and it's probably out of date, but it's the one, I, <laughs> it's the one I've got, and it's the best one, because it's free, and it does work, of a fashion, um, 
And I will tell you a little bit more about how I had to end up setting that up in the end, but I, uh, we'll, we'll just, just, I've got this Tekonshi unit, and it, and it basically come, uh, I bought it for the LR3, and there's a patch lead, like a plug and play affair that you have to buy from Land Rover. I bought the old lot from Land Rover, which helped a bit. Uh, but I ended up with this Tekonshi unit, which is just a Tekonshi, and there's a little pigtail unit, which is a sort of a, a sort of a short, loomy affair with um, with a plug at each end. And they call it plug and play because you you clip it into one end and clip it into the other end, and all the problem goes away, which is what's happened. Um, and that that unit can be bought from Land Rover if you live on this side of the pond, or maybe an updated version of it, I'm sure. Uh, and the the patch lead, and I don't have the part number, as I said, because I've I've had it. 10 years about um, but uh, it is a standard Land Rover part so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to flip the camera around and I'm going to show you roughly where I've installed the thing and then we're going to pull it apart and I'm going to try and shine a light up to show you which uh, plug socket you're going to need which multi-plug sort of connector you're going to need uh, to plug it into the, the installation is fairly straightforward you don't have to put it where I put it uh, you can put it wherever you like I suppose within reason but um, I'll show you where I put mine and then you can figure out whether you like that or not right now here we are look we've got Finn's driving seat here look it's a, it's a mess because I've been pulling sort of 12 or 15 hour 12 hour days 8 to 20 hour good lord Firthy 10 to 12 hour days at the moment 7 days a week I've just got a random day off here that squeezing this video in I said to Taryn I said go and do a video and she says oh must you do that why don't you relax <laughs> not really sure I know how to do that but anyway here we are so you'll have to ignore light because it's it, it's not very good as I've mentioned before in the Defender we're really short of any kind of workable light uh, and it's pretty well lit in garage here look pretty well lit we've got a light a lot at shop but uh, there's not enough inside even as that and I've got two of my best lights on job to try and show you what happens now here's my Tekonshi unit look you can see and I've mounted it to this black panel just under the you know, knee kick, knee panel or whatever they want to call it. And uh, you basically have this little bit of a sort of a, 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 a cradle that you use. Now, I mentioned earlier on that you can put this wherever you like within reason, and you can. But the constraints uh, on that are that, that there's a limit to how vertical this affair can go and, and they prefer to be sort of horizontal apparently and that's I'm guessing because there's <coughs> some sort of mercury switch in there that sort of uh, figures out how hard you're braking sort of an inertia switch of some description or other that shows you how hard you're braking and it and it's got a limit to what sort of angle it can be at if that makes sense um so I've mounted this this is this is all right but if you wanted to, I suppose you could mount it, you know, underneath here, really, if it didn't get in way at foot, or, I don't know, up here or somewhere. You can mount it pretty much wherever you like, as I said. Now, I put it there. It's not in my way there. Of my knee, my knee sits pretty much well proud of it, if you see what I mean, well away from it, and there's no, there's no real drama, but I suppose you can put it wherever you like. Anyway, that's where I put mine, and I put mine there because, as you can probably just see, if we, if we come a bit closer, what I've done is I've tucked up here this this cable i've took this cable up and it just sort of fits in between in between this panel and and, and this panel here so to, to sort of get it out of the way and then it goes on the inside of this uh well you could i suppose bring it through this rubber here and a bit of a rubber gasket now underneath here you're going to have a couple of screws i'm just going to try and bring this round if i can um uh, and point it up you can see here we've got these screws uh these are seven mil well, they're not screws, are they? But you know what I mean. I've got seven mil um, uh, nuts, I suppose. But on back of it, it's just a screw, and it screws up into a captive nut. This is your OBD2 reader. Uh, don't go and plug anything in this because apparently Land Rover have put in some backwater, some backwater code in here. And if you put in a non-proprietary thing on these OBD2 readers on the <coughs> on the Defender, causes a bunch of drama and. It, and corrupt some codes and there's a whole bunch of mess that incurs so don't shove your average every day OB. I've got a gap reader gap 2 reader that I was using and, and I did use on my black Land Rover and my Defender me and Albert when it sort of had that bit of a bit of drama I used my OBDT re reader and I didn't cause any issues but Land Rover have advised me that I should never shove it in there because um, 
Uh, Land Rover altered the code and have, have sort of generated some drama there. Any role, that's just a cautionary thing. So until until they've got full backup support from people like Gap or whoever, I would ro strongly recommend not shoving out in there. Anyway, there's three of these chaps, and when you take these off here, when you take them off, uh, this this panel here falls down. And I'm going to stop recording while I do that. Uh, or can I do it while I've got it here? Maybe you can do it. I don't know. Well, I could do with an extra set of hands here, couldn't I? Taryn is trying to relax as well. So uh, basically, you just undo these here with this. You know, with a. This isn't bad, is it? One handed. Look, look at Firthy go here. It's all going to go wrong when this falls on the floor and I can never find a screw again. And then I shall be upset because I didn't have the right amount of. Here, I see. It was one out. Um, right amount of hands to do job. Uh, my gimbal has just informed me that the gimbal rotation axis has been exceeded. <laughs> not quite sure what that means, but yeah. so then you pull that one out there. That's another one on the floor, uh, and then this one here right at the end here. Now we did this in parking lot of Land Rover when I were up there because, as I said, I got told the thing home, that caravan home, and and uh, I weren't going to tell we told me out any brakes on trailer, so we did it on the floor. Now when this comes out. You'll see just in here, if I can move this here properly, you can see in here you've got a bit of a plug for the light, for the footwell light, and you can just sort of unplug that, if you like, and push the old lot out at road. And uh, and so, let me see if I can just figure out how that goes. There's a bit of a... Uh, your man's better at this job, isn't he, Simon? There's a bit of a... There's a bit... Oh, if I can push this, you can just put your nail on the back of this clip. Can you see here, there's a bit of a push thing you just push that down and slide it out of the out of the light uh, Simon uh, from powerful UK is much better at explaining these sorts of things he's gifted and uh, gifted chat when it comes to this sort of nonsense any road yeah, you can pull this down and just sneak it out at road sufficiently to get up underneath here or you can pull it out altogether it does actually just pop out if you see you've got a bit of a prong on there and you can just shove that under there and there's a, another one here look and they go into slots just at back there and you can pull that out at road. Okay, I've turned, I've taken the gimbal off here because it, it won't reach far enough and it's just under the way a bit and I've repositioned my best light because there's not a lot of light up here but what I wanted to show you <coughs> is underneath here we've got, how can I show you that? Here we are. Can you see now we've got a little metal, a uh, little metal, I don't know, side panel of some description here. Structure that holds the brake unit a clutch or whatever. This is brake, I suppose, isn't it? No clutch on. No clutch on these nowadays. Any road, you can see how um, uh, this wire actually, this wire with yellow thing in here, you can see that. That's actually made for me oh, high level light bar. It comes under through through this donut here. Uh, and uh, I always like to leave these just in case you never know when you just want one, do you? So I, I, I sort of leave them. Don't cut the ends off all the time, and I just sort of poke the thing out at road, so it's <coughs> useful just in case you want to use it again if you have to take it off. But you can see that this black, this grey plug behind that wire there, can you see, uh, with a black, white, and and blue and red sort of uh, plug that goes into it. That's the plug that you want for your brake control unit, and you follow this wire through here. And it comes out here, as you can see, and this is it. And I've just sort of shoved it across and over the top here, and then underneath and the front, and then round the back, and just up the side there. Can you see? I just trapped it up there, uh, and then I've screwed that sort of mount uh, onto the onto the plate of the you know your kick plate, a knee plate, or whatever you want to call that, uh, and that's it basically. That's me me uh, brake control unit in position um, and that's as simple as it is you get this little uh, patch lead that you comes from Land Rover and you just plug it in back of there screw that up and click and play and away you go and that's as simple as that so they are see uh, now I just wanted uh, I just wanted just before I finished the video to let you know the the difficulty one of the thing one of the interesting things I had was as I said I had this fitted this uh, this brake control unit I had it fitted to me uh, to me LR three and had it fitted to the Range Rover and in me LR three and the Range Rover it just it just swapped over and there were no difference in feel or out now 
when I moved it over into the Defender, it was there was somewhat of it not right, and and every brake control unit I imagine is going to be different. This one has a setting on it that allows you to intensify the initial braking unit, uh, the initial braking effect. So, and I, re I guess the reason for that is so that when you just touch the brake a little bit, uh, you don't get shoved in the back by by your trailer. It, it sort of uh, applies a, a larger initial sort of braking effect to the for, to the trailer, so that it sort of pulls you back a bit right at the beginning. And uh, and th this unit, this Tikonchi unit, has got this sort of uh, this sort of thing on it, which allows you to look at the state at bench look. And it's because I've been. Um, it's not normally like this. It's normally clear and clean and all that kind of stuff but been in and out of house and i'm working these mad hours at the moment and i haven't had a chance to tidy up in fact i've still got, I've got bought two boxes for me screws and bolts and things that currently fit in these cabinets here and i haven't filled them up yet they've been in there since before christmas well before christmas where were I? oh right yeah so it's got this initial um uh <laughs> Darren says you can't record a video. The garage is a terrible mess. There's stuff everywhere. You can't. What, what will your viewers think? Well, I didn't, to be frank, I don't care what you think. This is real life, I suppose, isn't it? Um, uh, <clears throat> so this initial sort of setting was a bit of a problem when I put it over to the to the defender, but I didn't realise. I didn't know because in the LR3 and the uh, the Range Rover, it were all right. It was set just just about right for. Um, for the for the caravan and 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 the other trailers, I've never really had any drama with it. But the setting was too intense for the defender. Now I don't know whether this is because the defender's got a more sort of sophisticated braking system, or uh, or whether it just works better. I, I can't tell you. But what the effect was when I was towing with the defender, as it was. Now you've got a bit of a rolly knob here. Keep track of these things because on my country you've got a rolly knob as well that affects the intensity of your braking, how much braking you send over to the trailer. Now that's separate from this preliminary sort of preliminary sort of uh, um, uh, early braking intensity. If you see what I mean, that just controls the level of brake that is applied to the trailer depending upon your setting on your brake pedal but the initial uh the initial sort of brake the brake pedal touch the initial charge boost uh, maybe for want of a better description is a separate thing and no matter how much i rolled this rolly thing i couldn't get the the braking of the caravan right it all felt wrong and it and it presented itself as being pulled sharply to the left as if you've got a brake binding you know pulling your left your front left one you know if you if your front left one's working too hard or your front right one's not working at all or less then you sort of your car veers to the veers to the left uh, and this was what was happening all the time and i thought it i, I didn't think it could be outdo with the brake control unit because it it felt like it should be the the car you know the front brake pulling the car and so i thought there was something wrong with the way the defender was set up for towing really when i first had it but of course that it took a while before i realized that weren't actually the problem the problem is the the brake control unit's boost that had set to sort of maximum for the range rover and the lr3 was too hard too much and i reset the brake control unit started from scratch as it sort of tells you to do it with instructions and uh and i and i set it back to neutral and then i noticed that this braking this sort of pulling didn't happen so it was definitely something that happened on the to do with the brake control unit and not to do with the vehicle which is sort of obvious with it being a brand new vehicle you know it'd be, brakes won't be fine aren't they but um it was a bit of a problem it took me quite a while to figure out what was going on but any road uh, you just need to be aware if you're fitting it into your defender like i was and you've had it on somewhere else maybe uh you might have to reset the things because it's not it doesn't tow like what you had before you know and, and you end up with too much pressure maybe too much power or some too much initial boost or something and, and i ended up with this bit of a weird varying and I don't, it was a bit of a funny sort of problem to diagnose um the other thing i should just mention i'm going to have to turn around here if, if my gimbal can follow me but uh the pivi pro thing which you can see me sort of pointing at behind me um that's got some as th those of you who are interested in towing us will know, it's got the ability to set a profile for your trailer so you can 
you know if you tow a bunch, like i do i tow a bunch of different sorts of trailers and some are longer and some are shorter and some are two or three axle and some are one axle and and so you can set the profile in here uh for how long your trailer is and where the sort of axle position is and all that kind of stuff and it'll it'll give you uh more information when you're backing the trailer up and and it'll move the cameras to to, to in your tow mode to sort of adjust um to your kind of appropriate angle i guess to give you more information i don't use it very much because i've, I've towed all my life and as a truck driver i suppose I, I don't use that technology it sort of draws my eye away from where i, I sort of want it to be which is in the mirrors and watching what's going on about me you know um, but I suppose if you're fairly new to towing, that they're handy tools, you know, and you shouldn't. I shouldn't be one here saying, "Oh, don't use the fancy tools." They're there for a reason. They're all tools, and you should, you know, should use them as as you see fit and would help. And uh, I don't have that advanced tow assist. I've just got tow assist here, so it doesn't do it backing up myself. And I don't know that I'd like it any road, but um, that might be also useful. But just bear in mind that if you do tow something it would be advantageous to set those profiles up and and i don't think it's got out to do with braking and i don't think it takes, tells the brake controller uh, anything different than i don't know i don't think it does so i can't see how it would but um so i don't think that pivot pro does anything like that i just think it just adjusts those guidelines that helps you sort of figure out where your trailer is going when you you're putting your steering lock on any road <laughs> i just want to say thank you very much for tuning in uh, I do appreciate all of the the comments on your uh, on the on the videos. It's very important, uh, and for other readers, I suppose, as well as me, really, to know that you're interested. But lots of folk read the comments and and they, they find the conversation and the debate sort of useful, you know, because it's not just related to the the content of the video. Maybe I miss some it out in the video, and and it's important, I suppose, to be able to to throw some additional comments in as so well thank you very much for commenting and, and being part of the land rover community it's, it's important to me and important to everybody else thank you very much for tuning in and thank you for liking and subscribing my videos and and uh, thank you for your feedback i appreciate it so that's all i've got for today thanks very much cheerio